going to be working into the hips today. So, when I start with the hips, I always like to work into the hip flexors, which means lying down, one leg into the chest, the other leg straight, and just starting to work into there. I would usually stay here for about one to two, if they're super tight, even three minutes. Start working into the feet as well. So if this feels tight, stay there for a long time, but get into the hip flexors. Then what I like to do is grab both feet. If you do yoga, you'll be familiar. And what we're going to do is try to pull your knees down into your armpits but on the outside. But what will happen is your lower back will start to round up to the ceiling. What I want you to do is to press your lower back down into the floor and then start to pull. You'll definitely feel your hips. We just stay here. Tuck your chin into your chin. Tuck your chin into your chest. Do a little rock even after you've been there for a few minutes. Then we go down, press into the heels, contract the core, bring it up into the air, squeezing the glutes, down, up, down, up, down. After you've warmed up into your glutes like this for a while, once you're up in the air, you're going to open your knees, bring them to normal. Open. Starting to warm up to this whole lower area. Okay. Now we go to the 90-90 stretch. So, front leg straight with the mat. Back leg straight with the side of the mat. You're just going to go down and up 10 times. But you don't want to collapse down. You want to lift up through your spine. So you breathe in. Make your spine nice and tall and then move from your belly down. Starting to work into the tips. Then on the last one, you're just going to hold it. Move your body to adjust. Feel how that feels. Again, if it's tight, you can stay there for longer. You can do more up and down repetitions. On the side, same story. Grow tall. Go down. Last one, stay there for a little bit. And coming up. Now you're gonna bring your feet in front of you like this. And you're just gonna let your knees drop to one side. And to the other side. I'll always, I usually do this quite a lot to get into the lower back and into the hips. Now, what you really want to work towards is this. So, get nice and tall on your bum. Bring your knees up. Keep your hands steady. And you're just going to work dropping the knees, trying to keep the upper back nice and stable and steady. And you go back, not using your hands working through the hips. Now, this is really what you want to work towards. When you can start to do this without using your hands, then you'll have good hips. Nice. And after that, you're going to push back. 
make our body nice and tall, pushing the shoulder blades down the back, pushing onto the hands, so the shoulder blades are not coming forward, the shoulders are not forward, they're back and down, knees are pressing into the mat. Just stay here for a while. Here you can lift and lift. This should be very challenging. Because we're working into the end range of the hip flexor. And from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk using your bum. So you're gonna like Lift onto one side and move the leg forward and lift on the other side moving the leg forward. So you're walking on your bum, moving forward. Very good for hip alignment and back. This is quite challenging, so it won't take long to get tired. If you get tired quickly, just rest a little bit, go back into it and repeat three, four, five, however many feels comfortable and good. And back. Once you've done that for a little while and you're feeling good, now we go into the table, push your feet flat, Bring your hips up. Again, the shoulder blades don't, the shoulders don't come forward, they go behind you. And then from here, down, back into this position. And press back up. Squeeze the glutes, pull the shoulder blades behind you, and down. Back up. Again, I usually go for 10, but if it feels good, you feel things stretching, feel things working, go back in, stay there a little longer. A lot of people treat warming up or mobility as like this little thing that you have to do before you train, but this can be your whole workout, just moving. If you do a hundred of these, you'll get tired, you know? your body is working, much better to move and to stretch in a way that the body actually likes, that the body is not used to and feeling good in it, the body's not used to and starting to feel good. Move in those patterns. Next thing, open the legs wide. Now depending on your flexibility, you might be able to grab the foot or just here. Just go to where you can and rest. Start feeling comfortable there. After you've been here for a while, if you can, if you're down here, just try to reach your hand over. If you can grab the foot, try to reach over and grab your hand. Just stay here for a while. Yes. Bonjour. Go over to the other side, reach where you can. I like to grab the foot. And then when you're ready, take the hand over. This will stretch the quadratus laborum, which is this muscle that connects from the lower back into the hips. So if you have a tight lower back, it can often be, get that on my face, this muscle, so this is a great stretch for that. Then when I've stretched this for a bit, what I like to do is try to lift my torso up. So breathing in, lifting up out of your seat, turning your torso towards the leg, and just going down. And I like to do about 10, if I'm training legs, I do a lot more. So I'll just do 10. And then 
into the center. Okay, let's just hold it there for a little bit. And then other side, 10. Hips should start feeling warmed up a bit. And then we're going to come into the lunge. I did this way. So you can the cat. I did this way. So you can start with the back knee down, settling into the hips. Remember, you're trying to push your hips down to get your lower back flat. Pushing on the big toe so the knee comes in. You can also move the knee side to side so feel it into the hips. Then when you're ready, you can push the back, the back foot, the back toes down, pushing up into the leg. You might just be here and that's okay. If it's very intense, stay there for a little bit, come down, breathe, go back into it. When you're in this position, it's nice to squeeze the glute as well. So you're turning on the bum muscles and go down into your elbows if you can. This is a stretch I would do every day. So good, so important, feels fantastic. And just stay there. Again, it gets too intense, come out of it. Go back into it, come out of it. So you're just starting to build. You don't have to go to the very end in the beginning, you know, you're working at this over time and you might find your body is a little bit different from day to day, which again is totally fine. So pressing the hips down, pressing on the big toe, you can move the knee in and out a bit, get some feeling there. When you're ready, back knee off the ground. I like to rock a little bit. They say you shouldn't rock in stretching, but this is more mobility, so I like to rock in and out a little bit, even up and down. And then when you're ready, down into the elbows. And there you have it. Now, you're gonna stretch the calves. So you want something to stand on. I have a little yoga block. And you're gonna put your foot on it and the position of your hip is going to determine the, the stretch. So the more I move my hip over, the more intense the stretch is. The higher the foot is, the, the more intense the stretch is. The higher the foot, the more intense. So like now, I don't need to move that far. I can feel it a lot more. So here you just want to stay in the stretch usually go for like 30 seconds or a minute. You'll just breathe, focus on your breathing. Nice. Move to the other side. It's very intense but very important. Just always remember that the whole body is connected and so if you have super tight calves or hamstrings or ankles it's going to affect every part of your body yes can i help you Now, I go back into the first stretch, because the first, the first foot, I mean, because the first stretch is kind of warming the body, getting it ready. The second one, you can really go deep into it. So, I'll bring the hip more forward, focus more on the breathing. the ankle 
as well. At the foot, and the tail. Yeah, see now I can really feel that stretch. Yeah. Because the first stretch kind of like introduces the body, and the, the second time you go into the stretch, you really get to actually stretch. So when you're stretching something that's tight, the first time is like just telling the body, hey, look, we're going to be stretching. And then the second time you can really get into the stretch. So just doing it once isn't really effective. You know, as a stretching routine, you could do like, like the, the way you train. So you have sets and reps. Now the next stretch is going to be the couch stretch. I'll show you here. But you ultimately want to have, um, you want to have some, a wall of some kind, and you're going to put your knee in the wall. So you'll definitely need some kind of padding for your knee on the ground because it's going to get painful. So we're going to put our knee into the corner like so and the leg goes up the cupboard wall and you bring the other leg forward now if you don't stretch your hip flexor already here you're going to be feeling it but if this is okay you can go up onto the knee your body will still be quite forward and then if that's okay you can just stay here and breathe but if you're ready you can bring your your chest back Make sure your knee is nicely in the wall and not away from the wall because if it's away from the wall, you're not going to really feel anything. We're just going to stay here for about 30 seconds. This is the stretch you want to do every single day. Do it in the morning, do it before you train, do it in the evening, do it all of those times. But most people, you have tight hip flexors, which pulls on the lower back. So you're going to get all out of alignment. If you train legs, do this after your training. Do it before you train. They say you shouldn't stretch, but if you've got a tight hip flexor, you should definitely stretch. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move our hips forward. And at the same time, you're going to squeeze your glutes. Yo, okay, mine are super tight today. Squeeze for about 10 seconds and then move back. Yeah, very intense. Take a few breaths, regain your composure, move forward, squeeze your glutes. Go back, forward, squeeze your glutes. Yeah. That was very intense for me. I would usually do that about five times. Whoa. Next knee, next leg. You see now this leg is not even tight. Well, not as tight, not anywhere as tight as the right side. So again, when you're moving through it, the side that's tighter, spend a bit more time there. Stretch what's tight. When it's not tight, don't worry about it. So I'm just gonna move straight into the one going forward with squeezing the glutes. Remember when you're training, or you're warming up, or you're doing mobility, it's for you. So whatever's working, do that. Whatever's tight, stretch that. This is your chance to be with your body, spend time with your body in love, and work with your body. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna do the elephant walks. So you'll need something to rest your hands on, some blocks or some balls, depending how tight your hip flexors are, I mean your hamstrings. So I'll just show you, so I'm going to be pushing my bum backwards, put your hands in the crease of your hips, 
push your hands, push your hips, keeping a flat back. So your chest is lifting, lifted. I'm gonna rest on something so my back is straight. I'm gonna straighten into one leg, and at the same time, I'm pushing my hips backwards so I can feel it switch on. Take a breath, other leg. So these are the elephant walks. Now, I usually try to go for like 30 or 50. So let's go for 30. Wherever you are, you might be able to go lower. So you can even go very low, touch the floor. Just work with where you are. If it's too tight, go higher. You can even be up here. But just work where you where you are. You can hold them as well. You don't have to go quickly. bouncy ball it's really helpful you can sit on the bouncy ball but you can also do this movement standing up you don't need the ball but I like the ball so what you're going to be doing is the pelvic tilt so you are tucking your pelvis under you and then arching your back and pointing your bum behind you so you're working through the pelvis it also helps on the ball because you can rock you want to keep your upper body stable, just working through the hips. So rocking back and forth. Just about 20 times. Then what you want to do is rock side to side. Like you're trying to, you put your hands down. It's like you're trying to point your hands down to the, push your hands down to the floor. So you're rocking side to side. If you're standing up, get a little bend in your knees and you kind of your hips side to side. And then you can do some circles. So if you're standing up, you're doing like hip circles, like you're dancing. Another way. It seems silly if you're into training a lot, but that's a very, very important movement that people are not doing for their hips. Nice hip circles. Now we're going to extend one leg out. So it's like a, a, a sideways lunge almost. Move your hips forward. You're going to feel your groin switching on. You can turn your body at an angle. Start moving forward and holding it there. Just spending time warming up the groin. Other side, go out, go forward. Again, you can an angle yourself to the one side or just facing forward. Just start to feel, feel the tight areas. And now, take the, the arm of the knee that's bent, the, the arm of the leg that's straight, reach it over. Start reaching over, start stretching that whole side of the body. It's tight, just stay there for a while. Come back to the first side again. Remember, the first stretch is the introduction. The second stretch is really getting into the movement. So reach over, feel that long stretch from the foot all the way up the body. Other side again. Now again, this is yours. You don't have to only do two. You can do three, you can do four, you can do five. Start stretching into the hips, the groin, the side body, in that motion. And then you have it. You should feel much better in your hips, more mobile, more fluid. Now I would go into some kind of training if you're going to do some training. 